Three Taylor Swift Concerts Cancelled After Alleged Terror Plot Three Taylor Swift concerts have been cancelled after two men were arrested over an alleged terror plot said to be targeting the events. Swift was due to play at Vienna's Ernst Happel Stadium on Thursday, Friday and Saturday. But event organizer Barracuda Music said in an Instagram post on Wednesday that we have no choice but to cancel the three scheduled shows for everyone's safety after confirmation of the planned terrorist attack. The pop star's website also appears to reflect the cancellation. Under the tour tab, the shows in the Austrian capital now have a note which reads, all tickets will be automatically refunded within the next 10 business days. Two men have been arrested in connection with the suspected terror plot which, police said, looked to target major events in Vienna, including the upcoming Swift concerts. U.S. officials familiar with the investigation have told that Austrian law enforcement were still looking for an additional individual, or individuals, who may have knowledge of the alleged plot. The suspects had been under surveillance for some time and were well known to Austrian authorities, the officials added. According to Vienna State Police Director Franz Ruff, one of the men arrested was a 19-year-old who allegedly pledged his allegiance to the terror group IS. During our investigations, we identified preparatory actions and noted that the 19-year-old suspect had a particular focus on the Taylor Swift concerts in Vienna, Mr. Ruff said. His arrest took place in the early hours of Wednesday, with the second arrest taking place in Vienna later in the day. Police said both men had become radicalized online. They allegedly had specific and detailed plans to carry out the attacks on the concerts, which were expected to draw crowds of up to 65,000 each day. During the arrest of the 19-year-old Austrian citizen, in Turnitz, Lower Austria, officers found chemical substances which are being investigated as possible components of a bomb. It was said he would likely have not been able to get all the components needed for a bomb before the weekend's events, but Austrian authorities decided to take them both into custody so they could not carry out an attack using other means. After officials announced a robust security plan for the concerts, Swift's team said they would be cancelled. The outlet also said there was no specific plot against Swift herself, but that the attack was focused on the wider event. Austrian Chancellor Karl Niehammer described the cancellation as a bitter disappointment but said a tragedy had been prevented. He said the situation around the alleged plot had been very serious but thanked authorities for their decisive action. Austria's elite Cobra unit provided assistance during the arrests. There were initially no plans to cancel the concerts, police said, but this later changed. The cancellation came just hours after Austrian authorities outlined improved security measures for the concerts. <coughs> Hurricane blows $1 million worth of cocaine onto Florida Beach. More than $1 million of cocaine has washed up on a beach in Florida Keys during the recent storm Debbie. U.S. Border Patrol said a Good Samaritan found the packages containing 32 kilograms of the drug and contacted authorities. Border Patrol has not revealed the exact location of the package but shared photos of the taped-up packages, featuring a red triangle on the label. The person who found the package, a beachgoer, discovered it wrapped inside a bin bag among seaweed, leaves and other debris. Storm Debbie made landfall in the U.S. as a Category 1 hurricane on Monday morning, with winds topping 80 miles per hour. It has since been downgraded to a tropical storm and looks set to bring rain and flooding as it makes its way north to Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. Drugs frequently wash up on southern Florida beaches and surrounding waters as smugglers traffic the substances from South America to the U.S. Anti-Semitic incidents more than double to record high Incidents of anti-Jewish hate doubled in the UK between January and June to reach record levels. The Community Security Trust CST, says it registered 1,978 anti-Semitic cases in the first half of the year, compared to 964 over the same period in 2023. 
The charity, which provides protection for British Jews against anti-Semitic attacks, says it is the highest total ever reported to CST in the first six months of any year. The figures include 121 assaults, 83 cases of damage or desecration, 142 threats, and 1,618 reports of abusive behavior. The charity blames the rise on the anti-Semitic reaction to the October 7 terror attacks in Israel and the ongoing war. CST Chief Executive, Mark Gardner, described the figures as evidence of the disgraceful surge in British anti-Semitism. He told, it's a sign that the massive surge in anti-Jewish racism that we saw at the end of last year after the Hamas terror attack on Israel on October 7 has not entirely gone away. It's still causing a massive impact across the Jewish community in this country. Most of the anti-Jewish cases were recorded in London is 1,035 and Greater Manchester is 268, home to the UK's largest Jewish communities, making up two-thirds of all reports. Scotland Yard has previously acknowledged there is a problem in London after a massive increase in anti-Semitic incidents and offences since the start of the Israel-Hamas war. But cases were also registered elsewhere in the UK including Leeds 84, Birmingham 30 and Oxford 29. Home Secretary, Yvette Cooper, said there is no place in Britain for this vile hatred and we are absolutely clear that those who push this poison on the streets or online must always face the full force of the law. Meanwhile, Shadow Home Secretary, James Cleverly, said it is up to all of us to stop and reverse the increase in this vile hatred we have seen in the UK since the Hamas terror attack on October 7. Police have also commented on the figures, appealing for anyone who experiences hate crime to report it. Chief Constable Chris Noble, from the National Police Chiefs Council, said, the abuse suffered by Jewish communities is utterly unacceptable. We ask that victims come to us as soon as possible after an offense has been committed so we can begin our investigation as early as possible. In February CST confirmed there had been 4,103 anti-Semitic incidents in 2023, an all-time high, and described the figures as an explosion in hatred and absolute disgrace. Army Barracks to House Deep Space Radar to Help Protect the UK An Army Barracks in Pembrokeshire is set to be redeveloped as the home of a deep space radar program, the Ministry of Defence has announced. The government says the Space Monitoring Initiative would secure long-term jobs at Cotter Barracks. Objects in deep space up to around 36,000 kilometers away from Earth will be detected, tracked and identified using ground-based radars in Australia, the UK and the US. The government says the initiative, known as Deep Space Advanced Radar Capability DRC, will help the nation's land, air and maritime forces. The site in Browdy, near Street Davids, has been both a Royal Air Force Station and a Royal Navy base. It is currently home to the 14th Signal Regiment, the Army's Electric Warfare Unit. In 2016, the MOD announced the barracks would close no earlier than 2028. Redeveloping the site would keep it open, with up to 100 personnel operating the radar capability, according to the government. Defense Secretary John Healy said the proposed redevelopment would secure jobs and defense capabilities. This new radar program will not only enhance our awareness of deep space, but also help protect our space assets alongside our closest partners, he added. Wales Secretary Joe Stevens said it was an important project for the country and the UK government was committed to working with the community to ensure its success. Two events will take place in September to share information with the local community and they will be followed by a statutory consultation period. Representatives of the program will attend to answer questions and hear the views of locals. An environmental impact assessment is also being undertaken by the government to support a planning application to Pembrokeshire County Council. <laughs> Freddie Flintoff struggled with anxiety, nightmares and flashbacks after Top Gear crash. 
Andrew Freddy Flintoff has said he struggled with anxieties, nightmares, and flashbacks after the Top Gear crash that changed my life forever. The TV presenter and former England cricket all-rounder sustained serious facial injuries and broken ribs after a crash while filming Top Gear at Dunsfold Aerodrome, Surrey, in December 2022. The incident led to him stepping back from the show, which has since been suspended for the foreseeable future by the BBC. Flintoff was not seen in public for a long time before he made a return to the cricket world as a coach. Speaking at the beginning of the year as part of the second series of Freddie Flintoff's Field of Dreams, the cricket star opened up about his recovery. I thought I could just shake it off. I wanted to shake it off and say everything's all right, but it's not been the case, told Flintoff. He added, it's been a lot harder than I thought. As much as I wanted to go out and do things, I've just not been able to. I struggle with anxiety. I have nightmares, I have flashbacks. It's been so hard to cope with. Previously, the BBC said it had agreed a financial settlement with Flintoff, which was reported to be worth $11 million, according to The Sun. A BBC Studios spokesperson said, BBC Studios has reached an agreement with Freddie that we believe supports his continued rehabilitation, return to work and future plans. We have sincerely apologized to Freddie and will continue to support him with his recovery. Flintoff returned to cricket as a part of the England coaching staff and is currently in his first full-time coaching position with Northern Superchargers in the 100. Man charged with stealing 63,000 commemorative Bluey TV show coins. A man has been charged with the alleged theft of 63,000 limited edition coins based on the popular Australian children's TV show Bluey worth more than $380,000. Strike Force Bandit, a special police unit set up to investigate the theft from a warehouse in Western Sydney, has charged Stephen John Nielsen, 47 years old, with three counts of breaking and entering. Gold-colored and worth one Australian dollar each, the coins are produced by the Royal Australian Mint and are legal tender in the country. They resemble normal Australian dollar coins except for an image of the popular show's main character on one side. Known as Bluey Dollar Bucks, they have been fetching as much as 10 times their face value online and one eBay seller has offered a pack of three for almost 600 Australian dollars. Nielsen worked at a warehouse in the Sydney suburb of Wetherill Park where the coins were being stored for two days before being taken to Brisbane, police said. With the help of two other men, he is accused of snatching the haul, which weighed 500 kilograms, from the back of a truck in June, before selling it online within hours. Police recovered 189 of the coins in a raid on a house in the city the same month but have said only 1,000 of the coins have been accounted for and most will now be in circulation. Nielsen was arrested at a Sydney home on Wednesday. The New South Wales Robbery and Serious Crime Squad named its investigation unit after Bandit, who is Bluey's father in the show. Detective Superintendent Joseph Duahy told reporters the theft has deprived a lot of young children and members of the community of having access to these coins, so we're doing our absolute best to try to recover these coins and put them back into circulation. The Australian animated show is targeted at children but is widely popular with adults and was one of last year's most streamed television programs in the US. It is the 14th highest rated show of all time, according to IMDb. Anyone who has received one of the stolen coins does not need to return it, police said. <laughs>